In this video, I will work you through the first steps of installing R and R Studio, and then just the very first steps of using R via R Studio. R is the actual software, the statistical software we use for doing econometric data science things. R Studio is what's called a user interface or particular user interface or integrated development environment, to use the technical term. It's basically a convenient way of using R. So as we will download things, we will first have to download R and then second, we download R Studio. So let's do this. We'll go to any sort of browser and just say R download. And you will get to this website, uh, www.rproject.org. Um, so we download this here. You can then um, just get your version. Okay, to down, please choose your preferred Cran Miro. So that means um, you have to choose from which sort of server you choose it. I'm right now in Sweden, so I choose this one and then you can choose download R for Windows. My computer is Windows, so you download R for Windows. This, I have already downloaded R, so I will not do this. This is, however, like installing any other software. You download it. You actually, in fact, I will download it. Um, so install R for the first time. Do this, download for Windows. It recognizes I have a Windows machine. If you have a Mac, it will hopefully default to, to a Mac. We download this. This will download onto my into my downloads and then you uh, double click let me see oh, wait. so here we have R for Windows that's in my downloads folder you double click this and you install it okay and then follow just all the defaults um, your computer offers you. I'm not going to do this, I have it installed already. So this is the first step. So, okay, now next step is, once you have downloaded R, you need to download R Studio. So you go to any browser again and look for R Studio download. You will get to a website here, posit.co, R Studio desktop. Posits the name of the company which runs R Studio, and here you get reminded again that before you install R Studio as the second step, you have to install R. We've already done that, so we can go to the second step: install R Studio, download R Studio. Again, it recognizes what computer I have. If you have a Mac, it will recognize your Mac, and you download it. And unfortunately, Chromebooks are not very straightforward. Um, I don't have a Chromebook, so I cannot give any advice here, but I know it's difficult to download R and R Studio on Chromebook. So you download R Studio. Again, it will download into your, uh, into your download folder. And once it's downloaded, you can, uh, you can run this. Here's the R Studio. Uh, here's now the R Studio download. If I was to double click on it, it would ask me to install it and I would go through all the and leave all the defaults. I have R Studio installed already. Then once you um, have installed R Studio, you can start R Studio. Um, I have already started it and it will look like this the first time uh, you you see it. Now let me just work through the very first steps of um, using R and R Studio. Firstly, you can use it just like a calculator. So you have here, we can see, let me just first give you a little tour of uh, R Studio. Okay, so uh, the, the very first thing is, you can see that sort of separate in certain parts. And this is what we call the console here. Yeah, so that's very important, we'll see later. Then here you have another window uh, where you see a number of Windows environment history connections tutorial, the environment will be the important one. And then down here you have a set of windows, files, plots, packages, um, 
will possibly use the packages soon, plots we may be using very soon, not in this video, help may be useful as well. Okay, so a number of useful um, tabs here, and we will soon see a, another useful element of our studio. Now, first I want to show you, this is just like a fancy calculator. Uh, so you can go to the console and calculate uh, six times eight and press enter and you get 48. Now, we didn't have to go through through this to do that, but you can calculate uh, things you cannot do in your head, like the square root of um, just a very big number, and you get a result, okay? Um, that you couldn't have done by head, but any calculator would have done that as well. So again, still, this isn't a use, uh, useful use for our studio. Um, so, let me show you a few more uses. So you can create variables here, okay? So uh, for instance, you can say a and then a smaller than and a dash, which is, this is means define as, create a new thing, a defined as, uh, now I'll define it as uh, 56. And what you now see is that we have defined this thing here and this R has now saved an object which we called A and we've given it a value of 56 because we've instructed it to give a value of 56. We can create more objects here. We can create B and you say that's uh, 32 and we will now see that this has been added to the environment. And now these variables here you can use. So we can calculate C and that is equal to A plus B. And that will be 88. Right? So you can see how you this is already getting sort of a little bit more powerful than a, just a mere calculator, although in calculators, good ones, you can also save some variables. So once you close our studio, let's see you do some work here console you close our studio and we'll say don't save here that will be the, the right thing sort of to do in most cases I'll now start our studio again so we're starting afresh so your work basically has been lost here okay and uh, both the working, how we define things here on the left hand side and the results, the environment on the right hand side. When I close, so let me just do one of them again. Okay, A is 56. When you close our studio, you get this question, do you want to save your workspace? What it's basically asking you is, do you want to save this thing here? your environment, whatever is in the environment. And you may say, well, isn't that a good way to, to you know, save your work? And that, that's true, but what it doesn't save is your working. How did you get to this? And, you know, we had this C is equal to A plus B, and that was before I think saved as 88. What's important what the numbers are. If you then save that, you can save the 88, but you don't save how that 88, how that value of C came about. And that is often very important. So that's why typically here I, don't, I say don't save, okay? Because what's important to save is the working, not so much the result. So how do we now go about working properly so that we save all our work? Well, we create what we call a script file. So go to new up here, script file. Now we have a file. Now we have to save this somewhere. <clears throat> and now this is the next very important step, is you want to make sure that you save these things in a place where you know where they are. So I save that here. So I, for myself, I have on my C drive, I have a folder called R code. And this is where I save my work. So let's call it here first script. Uh, like names without spaces okay we save that so you know that's now first script and now we can do things here we can say if a is just taking any numbers here b that's this and let's say c 
is a plus b. So these are all my instructions. I haven't run these lines yet. Okay, this is just like a recipe. To run these lines, put your cursor into a line and press the run button. And that then now a is defined as 45. Or put your cursor in here and press control enter on a Windows machine or command enter on an Apple. And then it runs that line. So now you can see that B has also been created. So I run line C and this has been entered. So now I have all my results and I have my script file. So if we now think about coming back the next day to work again, what we want to do is we want to save that script file. Now we close R. Now we open it again, we pretend it's the next day. Our script file is still there. It's immediately open because it was the last thing we worked at or you just go to your uh, folder, R code, here's your file, first script, okay. It's already open in our case. Now to do all your work again, all you got to do is you got to, you can either run line by line through this code again, or you press that source button up here. And that immediately runs all the uh, pieces of code in your, um, in your script file. Okay, so this is just the first sort of instruction into how to install R and RStudio and then how to use it. Importantly, use script files. Um, if you want to continue learning how to, um, how to work in R, go to this website. A link will be in the description to this video where you can do more work here. Think about first steps, loading data, basic data analysis, graphic representations, regressions, and there will be more pages coming. And there are also example data files, which you can use.